Hey guys, it's Sheena with Crooked Calligraphy and today I'm going to show you how to do a simple, easy, beginner envelope with a calligraphy name and address written on it. And we're going to be using this handy dandy template guide. I don't know if you can see it here, but if you stick it around to the end of the video, I will show you exactly where you can download this for free. So let's dive in. Hey guys, I am just going to walk you through a quick tutorial of how I use my envelope guidelines to do what I think is a really good beginner calligraphy envelope. So to me, um, when I was first starting out, the most intimidating thing about doing an envelope in calligraphy, it was writing all of that calligraphy, the name, the address, you know, the numbers, everything, and sort of getting it all right without goofing up. So I think the most approachable way to write an envelope when you're just starting out in calligraphy is to do the name in calligraphy and then do the address in a smaller block text that to me is a little bit more approachable. And uh, another really difficult thing about calligraphy envelopes is getting everything centered. I know that that's sort of the classic beautiful look, but it does take some practice and sort of just getting familiar with your writing and how much space it takes in order to center everything. So in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to center the name. So you get some practice with centering, but then we're going to do the uh, address in a block text sort of off center to the left so you don't have to freak out so much about that. So I'm gonna use this guide and I'm gonna write on this nice mint colored envelope. If you're worried about ruining a bunch of envelopes with your practice, then just cut out like a five by seven or 5.25 by 7.25 sheet of paper out of your regular calligraphy practice paper and that way you don't feel bad ruining a bunch of envelopes practicing. So the first thing I'm gonna do is line up my envelope in the box here. This is an A7 envelope, so I'm gonna line it up in the A7 box. If you're using a smaller A2 envelope, line it up with the A2 box. And I'm just gonna use my pencil to trace on the guidelines. You want to do this lightly with a pencil so that you can erase all these guidelines once the ink has like fully dried. And I do these lines underneath. This is for the address. So I start these just a little bit left of center. And I try to line up them, line these up nice and straight here so that I have a nice straight line to sort of start off with. Um, and my address looks nice and lined up. And then the last thing I draw is the center line. And you don't have to go all the way across the whole envelope, but this just helps me to sort of visualize um, centering my name. So one trick I like to do to help me center is to print out either the name or the full name and address on a, a piece of just regular paper in my word processing software, regular word processing software, you just center it and then draw a line down the middle and this will help you to sort of gauge how much needs to go on the left side of the center line, how much needs to go on the right side of the center line. And this isn't going to be exact because obviously this font doesn't match exactly your calligraphy writing and how much space that all takes up. So just as an example, you know, I've done a sort of a range of different kinds of fonts here. And you can see that they kind of generally the center sort of hits in around the same spot. Um, here, this font is saying that, you know, Emily is a little bit smaller than blunt, but you know, you can just sort of see, and um, as you practice this, you might find a font that works better for your particular writing and sort of matches the spacing better, but this will just sort of give you a general, at least a start for how much you think should go on the left versus the, light, the right side of the center line. Okay. So I'm gonna go ahead with my calligraphy here. And I, um, as a beginning exercise, like to do just lowercase letters. I know those capital guys can be sort of tricky to get a hang of. If you wanna throw in capital letters and you're, you're comfortable with a few of them, go ahead and do that. I just find it easier to start with lowercase letters and then 
build up as I get more comfortable. All right, so I kind of see, I kind of want Emily to be on one side and Blunt to be on the other. So I'm gonna just sort of start here. And one other trick I'm gonna point out is I'm not going to have a tail leading into the E. I'm just gonna start the E with no tail on this side and I'll show you why at the end. So I'm just doing basic lowercase lettering here using all my basic shapes. All right, and then when I write blunt, I'm also not going to exit out with a tail on this side. And again, I'll explain why. All right, so I'm not exiting out with the tail. So you can see here, I have kind of gotten this okay, but actually it turns out that Emily is, is a little bit longer and takes up more space on the left side of the center line than the blunt does. And it's just, just because I've ended up writing blunt a little closer together. My M is really big here. My N is not as big. So I kind of just did this to illustrate um, why practice will help you just to get used to how your letters will look and sort of give you a little bit of a feel for centering. But you can also use a little sort of flourishing trick to kind of help visually center this, even though it's not technically. So this is why I've left off the exit and entrance strokes. So because I wanna give a little more weight here to the end, I'm actually going to carefully extend out with a flourish here at the end of my T. And I'm gonna add a little flourish, but not as much to the beginning of the E. And that way it kind of, it gives a little more weight over on this end and kind of balances out that this is shorter. And then I'm gonna add a little cross stroke there to my T. Okay, and it kind of looks generally okay. So now I'm gonna add in the address part. And this I like to do in block text as a beginner. But block text can be tricky with your pointed nib, so just keep that in mind. You have to press very, very lightly and go slow. Um, and you might want to sort of practice your block text. If it's really, really hard for you to create block text with your nib, then you can switch over to a really fine point, just regular pen, and that'll help you get a really similar look and it'll be much easier. So here I'm gonna line up with where I've drawn my lines here. And this is cool because you can kind of put in a nice sort of calligraphy style number. And then here I go with the block text. And the smaller you do this, the easier it will be. And the great part about adding block text and have it line up sort of on the left, left justified here, is that it doesn't really matter if this sort of trails off or if they're different lengths, it's intentionally meant to look like it lines up here. So it just makes it a lot easier for spacing. So for the zip code, I like to center the zip code, sort of have it spread out so it's under here. And here's a trick for that. Instead of trying to write it out one by one from left to right and hope that it works out with the spacing, I like to add in the first letter and then add in the last letter, uh, sorry, number, and then sort of see where the center is. And zip codes are five numbers, right? At least in the US. So you can put in the center and then sort of center the last two. 
and that gives you, and I've sort of goofed it up a little bit here. You can see the O is a little bit over here, but this is much better than if I had tried to do that just freehand working from left to right. So those are my tips and tricks for how to do this, I think, easier beginner envelope layout. Um, and then once this ink completely dries, don't be impatient. I've done this before and I've tried to erase the guidelines when this wasn't completely dry and you smudge and it just like ruins all your work and it's terrible. So let this completely dry, I would say like at least an hour just to be completely sure and uh, gently erase the guidelines. And you have, I think, a pretty nice looking envelope. So give it a try. Mm -hmm.